Well, 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 welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave, back at it like a crypto addict. My God, I want to be wishing you a very happy and healthy uh, Friday. Hey, you made it all the way to Friday, so my God, give yourself a... I don't know. What do you want in your life? Whatever you want in your life, I hope that you give that to yourself right now because it's the end of the week. But if you're a cryptocurrency trader, well, that means absolutely nothing because, well, it goes 24-7. Crypto doesn't sleep. Anyways, getting a live team right now. And I always, and this time I actually did remember that all my programs are on sale with the code year20. That's 20% off on each and every one of them for all of the payment plans, even all, even all the way out to a 10-month plan. But of course, I always want to say, hey, before considering any one of these programs, please, please, please take advantage of my free content. I've actually just finished the master, the the introduction to options playlist on YouTube, and it actually includes one of the videos from this program right here as the last and final one. It is one of the most basic strategies, but also one of the most powerful and something that, you know, no matter what level you are, you're going to be using. So, of course, that's a program that's literally 50, I think over 50 videos along right now, I believe 52. So one video is not necessarily going to get it fully done, but it'll give you an idea of what to expect. Anyways, more importantly, all of these programs are designed for people who want to do this in a more serious way as a living, as you're not only going to be investing into a 35 hour plus long program, which is really fucking long <laughs> for most people, um, but you're also going to be investing into the hidden members discord community. So want to make sure that everyone's coming from the same sort of integrity uh, in that group. So of course I want, uh, you know, I'll trust you to make the right decision, but of course make sure that you take advantage of my free content first. Anyways, without further ado, let's get now into the charts because my God, I know people hate that. Let me actually turn off the... Where is it? There it is. Okay, beautiful. Won't have the same mistake as yesterday. Sorry, I'm new to the internet, so <laughs> it's rather embarrassing. But right here, right now, uh, you do see Bitcoin actually fully confirming that red daily dildo as a bearish engulfing dildo. However, we are above still all of these major moving averages right here, which to me does present a little bit of a dilemma because yes, we have seen a bear attack. Yes, we do. Yes, we have seen a, a rather uh, massive bearish engulfing dildo. Uh, volume is not too crazy on it in fact it does make me reconsider a lot of my ideas but looking at the daily stokes they are actually hinting at a fresh cross down and let me remind you that each and every time that we've actually crossed a daily stokes down with my settings above the 80 marker right here has been actually pretty nasty dumps every every single one for the past year or over a year except for this one right here actually this was your february uh, late february one which you know did get this dump um right here but not too much follow through on top of that so uh, so disregarding that one, each and every time that uh, uh, that we've actually crossed down was was pretty much all these major highs. I mean, it was this area right here, 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 and this area right here. Uh, so that's more than a year's worth of pretty good signals. But for right now, uh, we are still maintaining to hold the overall support of the rising wedge formation, which typically, yes, is a bearish um, formation. But this is exactly what I was talking about yesterday when I see a lot of hesitation like this at a major support that everyone's kind of watching, or I'd imagine that a lot of people are watching. And uh, and you see a lot of hesitation. It does offer up the potential for, well, a counter move. And if we are going to have a counter move, I'd be looking for a move back above about uh, 4,000 right here that that should be the next resistance i have actually started to scale out of a lot of my positions i am on my streamer account right here uh you can see that uh oh i just oh i actually just got out of my last position uh it, just, it literally just expired seven minutes ago all right well that there goes that oh well uh basically all those puts expired uh at parity so 30 about 30 bucks i got rid of about 20 of them yesterday so holding only only 10 more and uh and fair enough i mean now, now they're gone i'm just holding some uh, some far out of the money calls i will put i will be looking to put on another position but i want to see if we break this area or not if we actually break 39.50 i won't take a position on spot what I'll do is, is I'll just be trading options because it's been a lot more easy on the soul. And what I'll do is actually just sell these 4,000 strike uh, calls right here. There's some decent premium on those, uh, not too crazy. And then maybe do a put spread to the downside as uh, as, as, as I do believe that's going to be the best way to actually play this move if it is going to happen. But first things first, need to see an actual breakage of 39.50. Otherwise, likely going to get another run back to the tor uh, towards the top of this um, formation. So... Uh, four hour right here actually does look a little bit more, uh, uh, a little bit more like it actually wants to break. You do see a nice spike in volume in comparison to the more relative uh, price action, which does tell me that this formation is getting quite mature and, and does want to likely have continuation. But uh, four hour stokes are starting to get quite down there. Uh, they're just heading into the bearish control zone for the first time in uh, in, a, in in a couple of weeks since uh, since early early March right over there. Um, 
<clears throat> but, you know, still maintaining to hold this area right here. And, you know, you could even look at the uh, 50 exponential. And because this is because this is rising, it's actually no longer really 39.50. It's more like 39, almost 60, actually. And uh, you can see with that last four hour delta that we just closed, we actually had a perfect retest onto the trend line. And so far, still holding above it, being held by the 21 exponential right here, the yellow moving average. But. As you can see, until it's officially broken, until it's confirmed, uh, no confirmation if that's not redundant enough. Anyways, going on to the higher time frames, or sorry, medium to high time frames, we got eight hour stokes right here. Eight hour stokes are coming down um, pretty healthily. Uh, eight hour jewel actually did give a sell signal right here at the top, beautifully one dildo before the actual top, and eight hour RSI trending below the exponential, uh, putting in some bearish divergence as well. In fact, I do believe that we, uh, I believe we have bearish divergence all the way up to a 12 hour. Yep, the 12 hour is showing bearish divergence. However, the question is, did it already play out because we did have that move down to the 21 exponential which is typically where I like to look at um, <clears throat> for that first move and you can also see that the 200 exponential this purple moving average right here is holding price action down so we're kind of getting wedged in between these two areas if i wanted to play you know if i if i just had one time frame to look at it'd be it'd be the 12 hour it's been the 12 hour for quite some time as long as we're below the 200 exponential and above the 21 exponential it's still you know still consolidating and still can go technically either which way um however <clears throat> I would say that there's certainly more pressure down here. That is a massive bearish engulfing dildo with decent volume on it. Not super crazy. 12-hour uh, stokes are having a fresh cross down as well. And uh, yeah, 12-hour RSI giving some bearish divergence. But like I said, you could, you know, the easy part of that already played out. Um, if I were holding any shorts, I would be, I would be using 4,000 to manage risk upon, you know, basically the 200 exponential right here. Um, and, uh, and if I'm looking to add, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be using the 21, which is technically coming in actually a couple ticks below 39.50 as I look at my other screen and all sorts of crazy things happen in Forex land, which has been really, really fun recently. Um, gotten some complaints that people don't want to look at Forex, but Hey man, this, this, this channel is about trading, not just uh, crypto. I mean, everything for trades. I, I don't, I, I come from the traditional land to begin with. I mean, I, I used to be a market maker authorized trader on the floor of New York Stock Exchange Arca. You know, I used to, I, I used to only trade equities. Um, so I don't, I, I, I certainly don't discriminate between, uh, different trading assets. It's, it's, it's all the same to me. If you can trade it, it's, uh, if you can trade it, you can do it. If that makes sense. No, it doesn't. Anyways, uh, while we are here, let's go over the higher time frames. Let's go to, let's go over to the two day. Um, two day is confirmed as rejection of the 50 exponential. Very, 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 very important. I would imagine that if we did pop back up to the 50 exponential, I'd be really looking for this to hold on to resistance. The 10 simple moon average actually coming in right around that critical 3,900 number, which is very important from the perspective of CMEs as if CME does, does violate 3,900, which we've been showing for the past like week or two, uh, that would be a structural change, uh, as far as I'm concerned as well. Again, I do want to remind myself that this whole formation is very corrective in nature, uh, volume signature, ex ex extremely corrective. Um, but this more, this, this more recent part right here, you know, like you could definitely make if if we do hold 3950 this is going to look more constructive once again uh, this this would just be considered a hunt um, but while we are here uh, two day two day stokes are actually headed up right now and defending the bullish control zone so that would be certainly a more uh, a, a more powerful sign what about three day uh, three day time frame right here uh, three day dodo time frame uh, stokes headed up actually as well and i really don't like trading against the three day stokes however there is a nice trend line forming all the way over here, which has gotten all of the major highs on the three-day stokes for the past uh, over a year. This was your high in December 15th, 2017, like the run to 20,000. Then, then it grabbed this high right here at May at 10,000 before heading down to 6,000. It grabbed this high right here at... Uh, what was it? Uh, 8,400 in August before going out to 6,000, and now we will likely rapidly approach it on the next uh, on on the next tick, assuming that we you know assuming that we hang around this area. So. What does that mean? Uh... It would mean that if we if I do see Stokes turn down there once again, that would probably be a good signal for moving to the downside of uh, to, uh, towards the down portion of the range. Sorry, the the uh, the the uh, the bottom of the range. What I mean to say. Anyways, um, let's go over the weekly as well. As the weekly, I think looks quite interesting. The weekly in the way that I look at it was a test of the purple 200 exponential moving average right here at about 4,100. Yes, we didn't get quite there. I think BitMexico got all the way to like 4075, maybe. Let me uh, confirm this. 40, uh, 40, 67 and a half, actually. Um, but close enough is close enough. And when we're looking at a weekly total time frame, it is... <clears throat> 
it's you know a few bucks off here and there. It's completely fine. It got front ran from what um from from the way they look at it. And again, you know, as long you know the play has been for the past four months just to sell the 200 exponential, buy the 200 simple moving average. That's all you've had to do. Um, even if you're like a medium to high time frame trader, uh, needs to be doesn't need to be any more any more complicated than that. Of course, the lower time frames, you know, there's been plenty of trades here and there. But you know, again. You can make life easier on yourself. You can make life harder on yourself. Um, and really, how many of these trades do you need to get per year uh, to make a living? I mean, not many. I mean, again, take this as verification from someone who does this as a living. Shit, you could have just waited for the break of six thousand. Um, I'm still holding some of that in my main account uh, and actually also my stream account as well. And uh, I will take it off if we actually open and close a weekly build above this 200 exponential moving average right here, as uh, that would be a change behavior. So of course, you know what would make me. What would make me sort of reconsider the the medium time frame picture? Well, we need to both open and close a weekly build above this 200 exponential. Then I'd be looking for a move into the you know at least into the mid 4000s, around 4500, and then probably um, you know 47, 4800 becomes a legitimate uh, a, 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 a legitimate target at that point as well. But of course, that is all you know running off the contingency that um, that Bitcoin even you know. <laughs> opens and closes a weekly dildo above this guy, which has been holding it back for the past five months since November. Um, that has been the main, re main resistance, so it works until it doesn't, as the saying goes. That's what my mentor used to say. He said, it, it was so confusing when I, when I first heard him say, he said, it works until it doesn't. It's like, what the fuck, man? This is a guy who'd been doing it for fucking 40 years. He's telling me that there's no like legitimate you know, way to know 100%. Of course not. Of course not. It's technical analysis. Jesus Christ, man, this Forex shit is just running everywhere. Insane. Anyways, um, okay, what else do we want to say while we're here? Uh, yeah, it is It is a little bit interesting to me, and this is not something that I typically care about, but uh, I do think it's worth mentioning uh, just, ju uh, just for fuck's sakes. But Bitcoin has not seen five green weeks in a row since, uh, since the bull trap in August of 2018 on this run from 6,000 to 10,000. Uh, and right now we are on the verge of actually perhaps doing three, uh, sorry, five green dildos um, in a row. One, two, three, four, five. But this one could very easily turn red. Um, again, <clears throat> one of those things that I don't put all that much weight on. But it is interesting, you know, just from a st uh, statistical standpoint, we haven't had five, you know, more than five uh, green weeks in a row um, in, in about a year. Well, Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps worthwhile to consider. Overall, though, I do want to bring up our oscillators right here. Uh, weekly Stokes are actually reaching out of the bearish control zone right now, um, so that would be significant to me. Of course, the big news was when it actually broke out of this formation right here, which we were looking at in uh, in late February. Um, that was kind of the kind kind of the signal to not be short anymore for that for that run from what was it like uh, 36 or 37 to 4,000 a share. Of that's what we're doing right now. Uh, but more importantly, this is the first time that the Stokes have actually even been out of the bearish control zone since February of of last year. Uh, quite literally, more than one year. Of course, you know we still do have a few days left until the until the end of the weekly total close. But uh, assuming that that we end you know anywhere above thirty nine hundred, I'd imagine that this will. This 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 will actually take that level out. I mean, you see a very obvious trend line forming right here as well you know, right, uh, right at the edge of the bearish control zone. So we'll see how that actually operates. But for now, it is looking fine. And that could also be another indication. But like I said, as far as the lower time frames go, you know, it, not, it doesn't need to be any more complicated than this. No, no more complicated than this. Uh, support, 3960, resistance, 4000. If 4000 gets taken out to the upside, I'd be looking for another move to test the top of this uh, uh, rising wedge resistance right around 4060 ish area. Maybe even make that full run to 41, 4110, 4120 wick, basically your prior high. Um, by the same token, if we do break out, if we do break out to the downside and break uh, 3960 to the, uh, and actually formally like close a four hour total below this, I would be looking for a run at the very least down to 3900. But probably somewhere down around here, uh, 30, 3850, 3800 ish area would start would, would would sort of make sense. Kind of retest this rising trend line, which it does not look too uh, too pretty on a four hour. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Yeah, right around uh, low 3800 if that would happen. Um, and like I said, all of our medium time frame oscillators are turning around. It would suggest that there is pressure building on this guy. Uh, but how many times have you seen it where Bitcoin, you know, will come down, test a major support in a very violent and aggressive way, and then just it just kind of like grinds it for a little bit and then gets picked right on back up. So if I don't have a position right now, I would not be looking to enter enter in, enter him to enter into a position right now. Um, like I said, I'm waiting for um, I'm I, I'm waiting for confirmation above or below one of these areas to put on an options position. If we do take out four thousand to the upside, I'll just sell actually some four thousand strike puts. As uh, to me, if if we were to do that, that would signify 
by that, we are likely to put in some more upside and that'll give me a chance to actually spread them out. And I'd actually really, really, really like to do that. Um, if given the chance, maybe maybe sell the 4,000s and uh, and buy the 4125s. If we were to get all the way up to 4100, that would be a beautiful play. But for now, um, you know, just literally right there in the middle. So it does make it difficult. Anyways, uh, we do have a 10-hour dildo golden cross. I should I should mention this uh, right over here. I believe the 12 hours nowhere near. Yeah, it is nowhere near. So 10 hours the highest one that is gold uh, uh, that is golden cross. But again, the well, let's actually do a little bit of a measurement. So from the time that we've gotten the golden cross to where we are up right now is about six seven percent. Um, the last few times that we've actually gotten a golden cross in this uh, overall downwards market was not right here it was right here in july on the uh, on the run to 8400 and as you can see once we got that price action was right about here and after that we got up another another six and a half percent very 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 similar the time before that was right over here on the run to 10,000, and where was price action right there and moving up about about 11 percent so we're kind of like right in the middle of the last two times that we've actually gotten it. The time before that was literally like down around $2,000 and it was golden crossed all the way from $2,000 to, to $20,000. Not a bad trade. That's why I pay attention to something like that. But in, but in an overall downtrend in a counter market, uh, it has actually been a better indication of kind of like the last grasp for air. So regardless of where this, um, you know, of, uh, of where this leads, I would probably be looking for trades. Uh, if, you know, if, if it did get to the 4,100 level, I would be looking for that trade to the downside. Um, overall, I do not believe that the lows are in. I do not believe that the bear market is over until until I get some proof that it's over. With which, which like we said, uh, would begin with the weekly dildo both opening and closing above the 200 exponential, which you can see that we are, you know, living comfortably below right now. Uh, that could change. And, I mean, it could, it could very easily change, of course, but that wouldn't, but that wouldn't fully change my opinion on the market. It would drastically change my tune for the short to medium time frames. The macro time frames would still remain, however, if we were to, even if we were to initiate that uh, speaking of the macro time frames I need to see a, a monthly total closing above the 21 exponential moving average right here which is all the way at 5200 if Bitcoin can do that I'd immediately get bullish um, and then you know there's there uh, there's one more piece of information the most classic way of doing it. if we got back above the the area breakdown at 6,000 no reason to be bearish after that as, uh, as well I'd, I'd imagine that you probably know beforehand um, but you know Keeping that in mind, we are very far away from that. And more importantly, as we do get closer and closer to the end of the month, you do see that this green 50 exponential moving average, which was broken for the first time in, in Bitcoin's history in December of 2018 of the past year, uh, we are flirting around with this guy. And right now we are living above. It's currently coming in right, uh, right, right below 3,900. So what's of, the, uh, what's of the utmost importance to me leading into the monthly close, which we got, what, another 10, 9, 10 days? Um, is do we close above or below the green 50 exponential moving average? Because if we close above, I would probably be looking for an extended run into, into the 4,000s, probably 40, um, I think, I mean, 4,200 becomes ex like extremely likely, 4,500 becomes very likely, and uh, then you have to start thinking about 47, 4,800, you know, test the daily 200 simple, 200 exponential, which like, you know, uh, a strong possibility if we were to actually close above the 50 exponential. But more importantly, if we were to close below the 50 exponential, that would just make me want to be overall short um, in stature, but also in position because that would tell me that we are still respecting this 50 exponential as a resistance, uh, getting, getting one, two, three, four, and, you know, working on a fifth rejection, sorry, one, two, three, and working on a fourth rejection, which typically is the one that, uh, uh, uh that should do it. Not always, though, of course. Um, but I'd be looking for a move onto the downside of the range. Again, you know, that move to about 3,500, 3,450-ish area, which the weekly 200 simple actually will be getting around that area on the next tick. It is it is coming up about $25 on, every, on each and every tick, and it's currently 3425 ish So if we were to get another tick, which we will get in the next uh, few days on Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, uh, that's likely to come around uh, 3450 and that would kind of make sense with that whole area as uh, as as the pink 200 simple moving average is, is of the utmost importance for looking for that next big momentous move uh, to the downside if it is going to happen and of course while I am overall bearish I won't I won't have that position bearish um, until we actually break the 200 simple on the weekly if we can do that then yes um, I'm more than happy to take on a mass you know a, a, a real position I should say for an actual real move likely you know for uh, uh, likely into the into the mid to low 2000s um, for right now, we're obviously living well above this, so there's no real reason to be, you know, super, you know, there's no real reason to, to have a position right now, in my opinion. Um, plenty of edge on that trade. 
if it does come uh, right now, we are closer to the top of this more preliminary range in this consolidation, which, as I've said before, the whole thing does look a lot more corrective in nature. Um, <clears throat> And the fact is, we just keep on getting rejected right at this 200 exponential moving average. So that is that that has been the play for the past four months. Didn't hasn't hasn't needed to be any more complicated than that. Um, so let's go see what uh, what CMEs look like right now. CME uh, closing the day as a nice bearish engulfing dildo, but we actually did get a pretty powerful exponential moving average cross right here. However, I don't believe. Yeah, we've actually we've actually only had this uh, cross once on CME. So it was right here on the run to uh, no, sorry, we've 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 never had it. Uh, no, we've had it once on the run to 8400 on this bull trap right here. It crossed for just one second, kind of like what we got going on right now, and uh, and then immediately sold off into. Uh, more importantly, as soon as we broke back down below the 10 simple moon average right here, that was the green light to head on to the downside of the range, which. In the current posturing, in the current consolidation, would be around that you know 3,500 to 3,450 ish range um, that we just saw. So CMEs are a little bit more interesting because uh, interesting to me because they actually did make a higher high right here and they are printing bear, bearish divergence on the daily actually one two three stabs and down. We have not tested the 21 exponential moving average just yet, and typically when I do see bearish divergence, I want to see a test of the 21 um, to kind of round it out. And geez, oh my God, man. I'm, like, I can't keep my eyes off the Forex on my other screen. It is out of control. It's fucking out of control. Um, <clears throat> But more important, uh, more uh, more importantly for CME, it's, uh, we do see daily Stokes getting a little bit more tired, hinting at hint, uh, hinting at a loss of momentum right here. Uh, it does look like once cr crossed down, and again, this is one of those things where each and every time that we've actually crossed down on these guys above the 80 marker, uh, has been pretty damn good plays. Calling calling major tops. This was this was our top right well right here, so not uh, not too good of a one. But the ones before that right was right here on the uh, on the drop before 6,000. The, the time before that was right here on 7,400 going down to 6,000. The time before that was right here at 8,400 before we went down to 6,000. The time before that was right here at uh, 10,000 before going down to 6,000. And the time before that was right here at the double top at 12,000 before going once again down to 6,000. And, uh, and the fact that it is kind of losing momentum right now after a nice bearish engulfing nodal like that, well, you know, putting two and two together, I would say that there certainly is more downwards pressure. You can see that last night we came back and filled the gap, and that's what's providing the initial impetus for support, also the red 10 simple. And again, like I said, the CME charts get it so, I, I think that they're just so much more clean and clear, and testing that critical 3900 level perfectly actually wicked down. And for CMEs, I'd be more inclined to say that, hey, as long as 3900 is available, uh, you could make the argument that this formation right here is more is more constructive in nature, which would be a good thing. But the whole, you know, looking at the whole, still does look corrective overall. In fact, if I put on the drawing tools, you'll very easily see that uh, we just hit the prior high, essentially. You know, uh, right? Sorry, not the prior high, but 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 uh, but the January high right over here, uh, hitting the nice horizontal and then straight down. Uh, and you could also say. That this is making it making a rising wedge of its own. Although I take that off right now because it's not too important. What's more important is this trend line right here. This trend line that I've been holding the CMEs back ever since uh, late November of 2018, getting one, two, three, four, five highs. Uh, if we were to violate that back down to the downside, back down to the downside, back down to the future, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Um, if we were to if we were if we were to violate that to the downside, maybe more accurately speaking, I would be looking for a nice counter trend movement because that would be that would be confirmation that this is a nice bull trap. This is this this would be this would be the trap, very similar to what we saw um, over here on the run to 8400. This this was a beautiful trap as well as everyone was talking about. You know, everyone was talking about this, right? That they, uh, uh, they were talking about the falling wedge, baby. The falling wedge is going to lead us out and over into the bull market to 50 billion. Well. You saw that, you know, very, very low volume kind of hang above this resistance. And then once we crash back down below it, just straight down um, a very aggressive move, which I'm sure a lot of people remember as that wasn't too long ago. And so we kind of have a, kind of a similar setup right now, to be honest, uh, very low volume on the break of this proverbial trend line, which you'd imagine would have would hold significant weight, um, significant weight, because, again, that has gotten our last five highs in this formation. Um, with all of our oscillators turning on the higher time frames, you know, it's again not not necessarily the best setup. Let's go to the four hour. Uh, four hour again gr <laughs> grinding on this support, so I, I don't want to be too damn bearish when looking at this. But uh, four hour jewel did give a perfect sell uh, two dollars before the high, uh, so to get so to get the ultimate top, but one before it. Uh, four hour Stokes coming down. What about ten hour? Ten hour is going to be down as well. What about the super time super low time frames? This is hourly. Hourly is up right now. 
I um, mean, we can see a very obvious resistance uh, shelf uh, forming right around 39.70, which is kind of where we are right now on uh, on spot as well. So, yeah, you know, as far as CMEs go, if 3,900 breaks, that'd be my signal that uh, I'd be looking for a move down to actually, as far as CMEs is considered, um, 36, uh, 3,600, 3,650. Uh, and at that point, got to be thinking about, okay, well, likely just coming on to the low, to, uh, to, to, to the lows, to the lows of the range, which would be, you know, again, 3,500 ish area, 3,550. So right now we're living well above it so fair enough and the reaction off the uh, off the retest has been decent just looking at uh, just looking at the hard time from oscillators i do, it does it does certainly offer up the potential for it to actually break but you know a day and a, or about half a day's worth of hesitation here is not a good sign not a good sign typically speaking Anyways, go check out uh, GBDC. GBDC was also kind of the canary in the coal mine last night, as uh, or sorry, the last couple of days, because GBDC printed this massive, uh, what do you want to call it, long-legged doji dollar right here, a sign of indecision, perhaps even reversal, two days ago, and as a rejection also off the uh, also off the cyan moving average right here, right around uh, five dollars and ten cents, and then we had fall through yesterday before all the dumpage happened, and that was the big signal as far as I'm concerned too, because I did take a short at uh, four, uh, forty twenty nine, I think it was. And I got rid of most of it at uh, 39.50, um, but that, uh, but, uh, but that was my signal. Why? Because I saw GBDC actually, you know, put in a reversal dildo right here. Then it confirmed it yesterday on open by opening down. And uh, same thing here, you know, popping back down to test the critical support at four dollars and sixty-four cents. We're seeing a lot of confluence between these guys. Uh, daily stokes are actually up right now. Funnily enough, uh, daily RSI is having the very slightest case of divergence right now. Overall, the RSI is quite bearish as it's, you know, it's just kind of hovering in the neutral zone with price action floating up or was floating up and daily jewel not saying shit right here actually right in the middle um so as you know as as long as uh, gbdc is below five dollars i would be looking i would be looking at this with more bearish goggles i'm curious what the weekly looks like however what does a weekly look like yeah weekly looks like a lo looks like a test of the 21 exponential and then down a uh, nice shooting star dildo right now uh, so weekly support would be right around 449 450 which which would make sense that that kind of put spot around 37 3700 ish area 3650 maybe um something like that <clears throat> so you know a, a a a long day left to go but uh definitely something that i really want to be keeping an eye on right now we do see obvious resistance forming in a little bit lower right around 490 uh, could make a more expedited decision on there and yes we do have the same sort of wedges formation forming here as well uh if we put on the drawing tools you can see i have drawn a very loosely uh loosely <laughs> related wedge uh, i think i did that on a higher time frame but more importantly still works we still got all the bearish divergence going on through it even on the higher time frames but support is right here at 460 what do we want to call it 460 or sorry sorry 464 464 there you go uh, if that breaks then i'd be looking for a move down at the very least to a 428 and then probably lower um speaking of you know there is a measure move to be made on bitcoin as well off this rising wedge if it actually does break which would be pointing all the way down likely here to about 38.50 but i don't put too much faith in 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 wedges i've I, I in my experience i don't they don't really play out all that often yes this is this is in the overall sh uh in, in the overall side of the general market so the market is you know still down we're still in a downtrend we've been in a downtrend for over a year uh again uh if you if it i mean Looking at a weekly, I think that's pretty damn clear. We've been in a downtrend ever since here in uh, January of 2018. Uh, more importantly, though, going back to the lower time frames uh, in talking about wedges, you know, I, I would be more inclined to play a bearish formation in a bearish market. But um, again, wedges are my least favorite for a reason, because I mean, right now it, it looks like it wants to bar back up. It, it really does. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't look like it wants to stay down here. <clears throat> Anyways, um, let's go check out the longs and shorts. We are gaining uh, longs rapidly right now. Shorts are falling off the table. We have a little under 25,000 uh, open longs versus 20,500 open shorts with 3,000 of these guys hedged, so really 17,500 open naked shorts. What does that mean? Well, that basically means that we have a great imbalance. In fact, we have the same imbalance, the like, like literally the exact same uh, imbalance that we saw before the dump from 6,000 to 3,000, which was right here in November, where longs were right around this 25,000 number. And shorts, 
reports were, funnily enough, right around this. Whoops, it was right here, right around this twenty thousand number right here. So, are you know, are we are we setting up in the same ratio for perhaps a, a similar move? Perhaps. I mean, that has been the trend for the last year. Each and every time that the shorts have gone down into this red box territory below twenty thousand, that has led to major, major dumps. I mean, again, the same sort of areas that we looked at on our higher time frames, but with regards to shorts, was this uh, this the the the, the dump from twelve thousand to six thousand right here in February of last year. The dump from May uh, at from ten thousand to six thousand last year. The dump from uh, from eighty four hundred to six thousand last year in August. The dump from you know again six thousand to three thousand. And then do we come back into this area and 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 perhaps do the same thing? Well. Uh, what was that? Four, four out of four times. Perfect. Uh, that certainly is more than a trend. So it works until it doesn't once again. But if it, you know, if we do see Bitcoin take out the resistance to the upside and start making its way, you know, towards 4,100, I'd say that this is not the right way to be looking at it any longer. Uh, it's time, it's, it's time to say that we have a change of behavior and it's in, in that, and that is the wrong, the, the, uh, the wrong mentality. And again, that's going to be the next big skill of this market is realizing when the market has actually officially changed for a, for, for a macro trend. And Again, if you want to make if you want to make trading easier for yourself, just wait for that. Just wait for that. Get long and no worries. Anyways, um, let's go back. Whoops, wrong button. Um, let's go back and now I do want to show one more thing on Bitcoin. Um, my jewel, which is probably my favorite indicator right now, uh has been pretty damn good at getting the tops for the past over year as well each and every time that the light blue has gone uh, around the 80 marker that has actually called top now this is not necessarily the right way to be using it but it is interesting to me that we have this signature i mean it's gotten all the tops from the 20,000 high right here this was your 12th high at 12,000 in february last year this was your high at 10,000 in may last year this was your high at 84 in um in august last year this was your high in early september at 7400 last year this was uh and and once again we got over here um, late February before that, uh, before that nice dump. And we're kind of in that range once again. So all of these have led on to major dumps. <sighs> it works until it doesn't. Again, not my first way of doing things and definitely not the proper way to be using the jewel. If you have access to the jewel, that is not the way, but just, just a weird signature that I have noticed in confluence with all the other things that we looked at on the higher time frames that, you know, our daily stokes, our three-day stokes, our daily, our, our, our daily RSI, the lower time frames, all the divergences, all of the uh, major exponentials, which I should show now. I forgot to do that. This is a two-day uh, dildo chart right here, which we just got rejected from the 50 exponential um, on the last close, which we did close one last night. And more importantly about that, for the past year, again, over the past year, each and every time that we've gotten above the 50 exponential on the two-day dollar time frame, that has called the high of the rally, uh, or essentially the high of the rally before kind of like the very, very last part of that bull trap and then down. So the, so the last time was right here, obviously, on the move above uh, 4,100 quickly faded the next day uh the time before that was right over here at you're going to notice the same the same literally the same fucking areas at uh, 7100 right here having one dildo open and close above it and then getting shoved right back down to the low side of the range the time before that was on the bull trap right here right above uh right around 8400 uh spending you know uh, about a week above there a week and a half but of course did just get the last little grasp for air and then down the time before that was more was more tentacle right here getting the very very last part of the uh, rally and then we broke the 50 exponential to the downside and straight down and the time before that was right here uh, on the double top at 12,000. So again, just another thing kind of saying, hey, in the past over year, the trend has been once we got above that, not looking too hot. So <clears throat> with all those things, you know, I'm presenting a lot of bearish things right now. Um, but I want to remind, you know, I, I want to remind you that and hopefully I'm clear with this. Hey, if you see Bitcoin get back above 4000 and take out this resistance, I, I, I think we're going to get another run back up. And this was just, you know, a bear trap if that's going to happen. And I really don't like the hesitation here. It's usually not a good sign. Yes, everything else does say that, you know, like that uh, that pressure is down. I agree with that. But we've seen this so many times where, you know, it just hangs on to one of these supports. And, uh, and until we get a full on confirmation that it's broken, well, it can go either way, um, which is not which is not too helpful. I understand that. If I had to say something from an opinion base, yeah, I'd go with the downside just because that's where my edge is. My edge is all telling me downside and coming. But until it officially breaks, man, I would not be taking that trade. Uh, and I'm and I'm in no rush to take a trade like that because again, I'll just do it with options. And more importantly, there's plenty of edge on this trade. 
plenty of edge. I mean, shit, if, if we break this area, you know, yes, I do think that we're going much lower down, you know, probably below 3,900, 38, you know, 3,850, 3,800. But realistically, I, I think it's, it, personally speaking, I do think that we'd, we'd start to really, you know, descend to the bottom side of this uh, whole range. Uh, not only that, but let's go bring up this. And I, and I said that I wasn't going to talk about this anymore, but you know what? I think I've changed my mind on that. It's the MVT signal, which, uh, you know, a couple of people came out with it not too long ago saying that, um, you know, it no longer works. It can be gamed, but here's the thing. Nothing's really changed in the calculations of it. So if it can be gamed now, well, it could have been gamed before. And if it, and if it could have been gamed before, then it's still showing literally the right signals. It's been perfect in the history of Bitcoin. So another case of one of those things, it, it, it works until it doesn't. But uh, again, something that has been perfect is worth paying attention to. And we are getting right up to the area of doom and death and decay of red dildos. Uh, right around the 140 areas where we start to actually tick red. Oh my God. I'm looking at my forex right now. And oh man, I, I just missed the biggest fucking trade. Motherfucker. Anyways, um, oh man, that is so frustrating. Oh well, life goes on. Uh, there's always a nice trade. Um, <clears throat> and we're kind of turning down right now, as you can see. And again, like I said, just kind of back to the sky. It's been perfect. This, this was your bull trap of 2018. This was your high, your parabolic high in 20 in late 2017. This was your high of the, or sorry, your, your bull trap of the 2014 mark cycle. This was your high of your 2013, 2014 mark cycle. And so uh, I think we can go back maybe one more. Yeah. The, the 2013 high right there. So it has been perfect in the history of Bitcoin. Even with all that, um, not probably not my first uh, route of call, first port of call, whatever the fucking saying is. But does you know ha has been perfect. So just throw that in, th uh, th uh, throw that in the side of the bears as well. Let's go over here to the crypto fear and greed index. We are at a fifty six. We were actually at a sixty two yesterday. We were actually getting a little bit more greedy. Um, <clears throat> going down into the chart, we see it. We see another similar signature here where. You know, each and every time that this thing's gotten above a 50 marker, that has led on to major dumps, you know, same areas, 12,000, 10,000, 8,400, 6,000. I mean, you already, you already know. I don't, I don't want to bore you with this. Um, but more importantly, just another thing saying, hey, be aware. Be aware that this has been traditionally where dumps have emerged from, I mean, perfectly from, from the last year. So something that has been perfect is worth paying attention to, in my opinion. Anyways, uh, I think that does it for Mr. Bitcoin. Um Let's go on and check out the other top shit coins. Let's go check out Mr. Buterall right now. Uh, 138 and Mr. Buterall definitely looking the weakest of the bunch, actually closing well below the 21 exponential yesterday. Uh, and now coming back up to test it. And I would imagine that this is likely going to be confirmed as resistance if we're going to, you know, intensify the pressure, the downwards pressure on this asset, which daily stokes actually have confirmed across down. I'm curious what the two day stokes look like. Two day stokes actually never got up. What about three day stokes? Three day stokes are technically up right now, but very flat. Uh, more importantly, you know, the, the, the most important uh, important support to be aware of on Mr. Buterall is right here at around 130, what, is it 138? Where is my trend line coming in around? Yeah, around 138. It, I mean, technically we actually broke it yesterday. Uh, let's go down to a lower time frame and get more surgical with this. So I'm, I'm not sure how much effort I put into making this one. Yep, okay, one, two, three touches. Yeah, three touches makes a trend. Uh, resistance coming in right around uh, 130, 138 and a half now. So as long as we're below 138, I, I suppose I would be looking for downside here. Um, again, same thing here. Don't like the hesitation. And typically speaking, when I see hesitation like this and I see, uh, and I see a quick retest of a broken resistance, you, I mean, usually that's not a good sign for, for more follow through. Uh, if it's going to be a legitimate break, I want to see follow through immediately and then retest it later. That's typically what I'm looking for. We're not getting that right now. So unfortunately speaking, um, okay. Back on to the Mr. Peter rolls. Yeah. So you know, it could it could be that we just end up redrawing it like this. In fact, look at the way all the wicks are, and that actually does make a little bit more sense. It, it has been working better, so perhaps I do take that back. But then again, it did break the daily 21, which I do put a shit ton of weight on um, with daily soaps crossing down at the same time. You know, I'd be I, I think it's I think it's better to be leaning on this one just because we haven't seen the other majors break just yet. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say more preliminary resistance, 130 and a half uh, preliminary support right around 136 and a half, whichever one breaks first. If, if we break it back to the upside, I'd be looking for another run to 144. Um, if we break to the downside, I'd be looking for a move down to uh, 127 and a half ish, or sorry, 126 and a half to 127. Uh, Mr. Butterall definitely looking weaker. Um, what about the weekly speaking of? Let's see. Uh, weekly indecisive, a lot of indecision here. Uh, don't really have too much to say about it. Overall, I'd say that the RSI on both Mr. Buterall and Bitcoin are actually quite bearish as uh, I think this works better on Bitcoin. Let's go over to Bitcoin. Uh, 
just confirm this really quick. Yeah, so this is Bitcoin's RSI. Whoops, wrong. There we go. Uh, and you see the RSI kind of floating up, right? And when, when I see the RSI floating up, but price action is essentially flat. And yes, it, it is certainly, it is, it's, I, I consider this definitely very flat um, as it kind of, you know, it has not broken a major support or a major resistance uh, while consolidating in this zone. Um, that is actually setting up typically, you know, that that is typically a bearish setup as you are using more and more power and getting really nowhere right now we're spinning our wheels more importantly we do have a very obvious support trend line for the rsi right here oh i guess it's already in there uh right here coming from the breakage of six thousand. you know forming the support all the way from august of or sorry july of last year uh and we basically you know came back and retested that from from what i'd say or you know e e even if we ticked up here tested 4100 then we'd then we'd formally test it right and um and that'd probably probably be another Another signal for a trade, at least for myself. Of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Go fuck yourself. E S M A. Uh, Daniel Zilkis. What the fuck is the name again? E S M or what's the European thing? Oh well, just have to wait for the man himself. Um, but more importantly, you know th this area right here coming in right at the edge of the bearish control zone tells me that hey, you know, be aware of this area uh, as that is where the resistance has been. I mean, really, Bitcoin's been unable to get above it since um, you know October of last year, uh, late October, early November. Okay, let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. What's she doing? Uh, let's get off the RSI for Mrs. Litecoin, more importantly. And are we getting that pullback finally for Mrs. Litecoin that we've been looking for? I think so. I think so. Um, we got daily stokes coming down still, actually headed healthily down below the, uh, below the critical territory. More importantly than that, um, I do see that the jewel is... D did give a sell signal right here, not a perfect one, but a decent one, and that was right around uh, sixty dollars and ninety cents. So not bad. I like that for a signal. But we are holding up above all major movement averages right now. Makes it difficult. I do think that this one comes down. We still have the same sort of bearish divergence on the daily, going all the way through one, two, three, four stabs. We kicked well out of the bullish control zone. Now I would still be looking for a move, probably down to about fifty six dollars. But I need to see the reaction there because the golden, the golden dildo, uh, the the golden, the golden dildo across is coming uh as long as mrs Litecoin stays above 56 dollars, it will happen sooner rather than later and when i say sooner rather than later i mean in the next you know definitely less than a week maybe maybe four or five days um it will be slower the more time that it spends uh, or sorry the the uh the lower that it spends but if you can actually rally here it'll happen sooner um, if 50, $56 is of the utmost importance. So because if $56 does give way, I'd become a little bit more bearish on this one down to about $52.5, but that would be absolutely critical because at that point in time, I'd consider that a, a formal, formal test of the, um, of the golden dildo cross. And if we actually do shoot through, through, through down into the downside, if we actually violate the 200 exponential to the downside, I would consider that a hunt and a trap, uh, just getting all the over aggressive traders in leading into a golden cross, making them think that it's going to happen and then taking it, you know, pulling the rug out at the very last second and um well you know what happens after that so only time will tell on this one but we are in a bearish formation still uh, we are at a major resistance which is what which is where i call the top at around uh, 62 bucks uh, uh officially speaking right around 63 and a half but uh but close enough is close enough and more importantly you know Typically, these things do break down, but the golden dildo cross is something that I do not like trading against. I do not trade against it, in fact. So, or I mean, I wouldn't be looking for shorts if, if we actually formally got it, but I would be looking for a test of it. So that's what makes it difficult. I need to see the reaction. As long as it's above $56, though, so if we were to come back to $56 and have a great bounce from there, I would interpret that as the golden cross being respected and don't be short. Uh, but we still are, like I said, in the context of an ascending brawny wedge, which typically does break out to the downside. The volume signature is right for this one. And we're at a major resistance. And with, with bearish divergence on a daily, with daily stocks coming down, I'd say that there's certainly more things in favor of the downside. But like I said, I do not trade against golden crosses. So if it does indeed get one, um, that would be it for me. Whoa. Oh my God, man. Forex is just out of control right now. Out of control once again. Uh, I might need to take a trade. This is starting to look a lot more juicy. Let me um let me get in over here. Okay, where is this? Six oh six. Okay, I think it's time. I think it's time. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, cool. Alrighty, uh, good to go. Some MT fives and back now over, on over here. Um, so yeah, I think that does it for Mrs. Litecoin. Uh, let's go check out the other top shit coins. Uh, we got, or sorry, actually, do you want to show something new right now? So this is <clears throat> this, and I'm I want I need to put a, an alert over here as well. 
this is a chart of the dollar value of mined coins for Bitcoin. And this is the most bullish thing that I can come up with as it would technically show that we have likely bottomed out. Let me explain. Each and every time that this thing pops up and makes a parabolic run, it puts in a support floor. Your first one being right here from this from, from this high, and that governs the, low, the lows of your next par parabolic cycle right here, which forms another support trend line right here, which we test in 2015. We actually get a little bit below it to be fair. You know, if, if you want to goose it in, you know, in the favor, uh, do something like this. But that becomes that essentially becomes the lows of your next market cycle. Then we put in, we obviously put in another another parabolic high right here. So let's mark this one off, and that becomes the lows, potentially, of what we've already done. So this is the most bullish thing that, uh, uh, you know, if if I want to present the other side, this is the most bullish thing that I can really think of. Um, you know, for myself, I do I believe that the overall lows are in? Probably not. But this is this is the closest thing that I found that actually does hold merit. It has been pretty damn good in the past, and uh, I'm sorry, we actually even had one over here as well. Um, <clears throat> and it, you know, it has been perfect. So it would actually would be suggesting that perhaps we have bottomed out. Anyways, uh, let's go over and check out BNB. Let's check let's check out the top shit coins now. Okay, BNB BNB chain BNB coin coming down. We called a top on this a few days ago. Uh, put in a rising wedge and broke it down. Very similar to what we're seeing on a lot of other majors actually. Uh, Daily Stokes headed healthily down now. Uh, actually having some little bit of divergences there. Daily Jewel giving a sell uh, at the top. Daily RSI giving bearish divergence all the way through. And we've actually come all the way down to the 20 minute exponential. So we got that full move to that 18 or sorry 13 dollars and 90 cent region, which we've been looking for for quite some time. I'd be looking for this area to provide support right. Or or sorry, provide resistance right around $14 dollars and 72 and a half cents. And as long as that does provide resistance, I would be looking overall, you know, at this major support right here, $13 dollars and 90 cents to be tested again. And if that fails, which does look like it is coming under a lot of pressure, I'd be looking for a move down to about $12 dollars and 85 cents. Um, if that one fails, I'd look for the full move down to, to $11 dollars and 85 cents. Uh, again, this one's starting to fall apart a little bit. You know, had a major run, definitely one of the best actors of the, uh, of the past year or the past market segment, um, but still not safe from the overall market antics. So again, this one kind of falling apart after leading the market to the upside is concerning. Do we see that? Do we see Mrs. Litecoin follow? Because that would be my next big signal. She was the other leader. Uh, what about Zcash? Um, Zcash basically coming up, hitting our next resistance and down. Nice one, Zcash. Daily Stokes down. Daily RSI bearish divergence. Bcash, what do we have over on over here? Uh, Bcash coming up to the to the same moving average and getting rejected, probably coming back down. I'd be looking for a move, probably back down to uh, 143. Uh, Daily Stokes down as well. Daily RSI giving some bearish divergence, and this one for or sorry, 143 needs to be defended. If if we start to give away to 143, 140ish area, uh, I'd consider this another trap above this major uh, resistance right or sorry, you know, former resistance now turned potential support. If that were to happen, I'd become extremely bearish. But for right now, I'd be looking for to to you know provide support. Uh, Tron Cash, uh, what was that? Was I a little bit bearish on this last night? Yep, we we even hit the move as well uh, to two point one nine cent, and then bounced off there. So again, I don't really have a big trade on this one to be had. Uh, if you miss that trade, you know shorting right here and then taking profits right here, I, you know I think that that one's over for now. Uh, I wouldn't be taking a I wouldn't be taking another short until two point one nine cent breaks. Um, by the same token. You know, we do have daily stokes headed down. We did lose all of these moving averages right here. Uh, you know, maybe 2.3 cents uh, acts as resistance. And you can get another trade off. Again, it's not finished vice, but mm, right in the middle of a range. I really don't like a trade right there. Uh, if we can break 2.19 cent, I'd be looking for a move down to, you know, 1.19 cent. Uh, that would be pretty nice. Uh, by the same token, you know, as you know, as we're in the middle of the range, I'd, I wouldn't want to get caught in, you know, in a surprise green dildo party all the way back up to the 200 exponential right around uh, two and a half cent. Um, but but as long as it's below there, it's kind of maintaining its overall posturing. Uh, and yes, the oscillators would be more bearish. RSI is certainly certainly more bear on the more bearish side as well. Uh, Neo Cash, what's Neo Cash doing? Uh, actually, did break this uptrend line right here. Whoa, hey, coming back to retest it perfectly right now. Let's see how it holds. Uh, so far, uh, is resisting, but it's literally right there. Uh, as if we can actually close today below nine dollars and thirty cents, I would be looking for this to come further down. At the very least, retest eight eighty. But uh, but really, you know, somewhere down around here, eight thirty area 
uh eos cash did it break down as well yes it broke it broke its uptrend line as well actually closing yesterday below the 21 exponential and just slowly but surely being ground down actually fo actually finally breaking out of this whole formation and uh yes there is support right around three dollars and 59 cents but personally speaking i think that this one comes down to uh 344. Uh, we do see daily stokes actually having a fresh cross down rejecting the more bullish control zone daily jewel is giving a sell signal J uh, daily rsi is mm, pretty neutral pretty neutral to be fair uh let's go over mr ripples nipples cash and mr ripples nipples has not been free just yet he just keeps on inching his way closer and closer to the apex of this triangle oh my god this one just does not want to let it go it's like elsa of uh, of frozen let it go let it go you must break your supports no you don't have to do that but it is looking like there is pressure down right now daily stokes rejecting the bullish control zone and down uh daily rsi is starting to take on a more bearish uh meaning but still so it could go either way again how many times have we seen it just come down to the support and then rally off it i mean one two three four five six seven I mean, it, it could happen an eighth time is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so I, I wouldn't take this trade until it's actually officially broken. I would be looking for more preliminary resistance right around 31.3 uh, cent. Um, but if this uh, 30.8 cent region does break, does officially break, I'd be looking for a move down to 29 cents, which is the overall support of this massive descending triangle. And if that area breaks, then I'd start looking for the actual, you know, the killer move down to uh, low 20 cents to high 20 cents or high, high teen cents region um, all the way down there for now. Still kind of wedging itself into this region. The AP Apex is technically the 29th of March, so uh, about one week to go. Not too much time. But hey, getting closer and closer, man. Getting closer and closer. Uh, I suppose, you know, as long as we hold up above here, it could all it could always be a, you know, a, a scenario where it just pops back up, takes out the upside resistance, but that'd have to be at, you know, uh, 32 cents now. Um, if it does take out 32 cents, I'd be looking for a move to likely 33 and a half cents and then probably 34 and a half cents. Um, along the way but for right now uh, i would say pressure is down uh, let's go check out stellar cash stellar cash also topping out right at our magical resistance trend line we were watching this one the other night uh took one two three four five stabs actually forming an overall broadening wedge and lost our 10 simple actually came all the way down to our 21 so oh my god our move was hit yesterday nice hey not bad not bad. Sometimes technical analysis, it works. Uh, coming all the way down to the 21 exponential now, popping back up. I'd be looking for 10.9 cent to be resistance. If it does resist, then I look for this to come actually further down. We do see daily Stokes headed uh, headed south. We do see daily RSI uh, trending below the exponential. Um, yeah, I, I, I would be patient with this one, though, because I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back up and pops like 11 cents region, that 10.9 to 11 cents region, and, uh, and grinds it for a little while and then falls over. I think this is going to take some time. Um, and I think that does it. Let's go check out traditional marks. Traditional marks closing the day up. And I was completely wrong about this. And I want to, and I want to directly say that I was wrong about this yesterday because I was looking for a move back down as 279 and by that bounce, it did not get there. It got to 280. So very embarrassing, but I did that one wrong. Um, <clears throat> extremely strong reaction off that, and that just tells me that this golden cross is still being respected. As long as we're above 275, I am not bearish on this at all. And as long as we're above 281, I'm quite, I'm like very bullish on this actually. Uh, we broke out of the same area that caught all of the last one, two, three, four, five highs. I don't see too much stop in this baby from 287 to 90 ish area. Um, realistically speaking, uh, looking good, looking good as, especially as long as it's above 281. Um, very good, very, very good. And as long as above 275, I would be, you know, I, I, I'd be overall bullish on it. Um, if 281 does start to break down, then I'd start to look for that move down to 279 and then 275. But, um, not right now. Not right now. Direction is up. Uh, daily Stokes are back to the upside as well. Uh, powerful, very erect, very girthy, very, very powerful. All right, so back on to Mr. Bitcoin, and do we want to look at some Dixie action, actually? Yeah, let's go look at some Dixie action. Uh, Dixie action test, uh, testing the lower side of the support trend line, um, still kind of wedging itself, or sorry, making an ascending triangle in this formation, which does have an apex actually later this year in July. So it's, it, you know, it can certainly take some more time, but it is getting quite full. So, you know, the, the, the more and more full that it gets, the more and more likely it becomes to, uh, it, it comes to exploding. Uh, weekly is... Weekly is actually not looking too hot right now. I would say weekly is looking a little bit on the weaker side. We do have a little bit of bearish divergence uh, playing out and weekly stokes are looking tired right here. So today's close is going to be absolutely critical. Absolutely critical. Um, 
I don't I, I don't necessarily like the daily right now, but hey, as long as this bottom support holds right around the uh, pink 200 simple, right around uh, 95 and uh, 95 bucks and 85 cents, uh, I would you know I, I would still consider it completely fine. But the second that that breaks, I mean even even if we just tick back below that area, I I, I would start to look for this to actually break down if that would happen. Overall though, I would be more bullish on this as uh, monthly does look fine to me. Um, does the monthly look fine to me? Um, I mean, uh, essentially, as long as as long as it's above that ninety, uh, that's that same area that we just spoke about. What was it? Ninety five and sixty, yeah, ninety five, uh, ninety five and like seventy six cents. Um, so it has some work to do, but uh, but hey, still holding on there. Could be a massive buying opportunity as well. I mean, how many times have we tested this area and bounced off it? Uh, let's go check out Euro USD as well. I'm curious what that one's doing. As where where do I have it charted out? I know I have it here somewhere. There it is. There you are, Euro USD. Ah, uh, and coming right back down, and that's exactly why I've been bearish on this guy for quite some time. Uh, major rejection at the at the weekly 21 exponential. Yes, it is kind of forming an overall uh, falling wedge, but this was a massive sell as we spoke about last night. Uh, and now below all major moving averages on the weekly as the weekly comes closer and closer to the close. Uh, I'd be bearish on this. I would be bearish on this, uh, and I'd be looking at for it to probably come back down to uh, to one twelve, one twelve point two, um, and if that area breaks, I mean that's 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 where this bottom starts to fall out, and I start looking towards one ten, one oh nine. Uh, wow, massive rejection that we saw, massive rejection. <sighs> nice trade to anyone who caught that one too. Jesus Christ, I don't trade the euro versus dollar, but uh, but hey, if you do, nicely done. Jesus, popping up to this horizontal right here, an immediate rejection. Did you look over at my forexes right now? And my God, it's just just it's going at the speed of light. Is what's happening. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so we talked about that. Yeah, let's go back on to Bitcoin and wrap this bitch up because it is Friday. So I do want to be respectful of your time. And here's what we got for Mr. Bitcoin. Uh, more preliminary support right around here, 3960. More preliminary resistance right around 4000. Very tight range. If 39, if 3960 breaks to the downside, I would be looking for a move down to about 3900. If 3900 breaks, I'd be looking for that move down to about 3800. Um, by the same token, if 4000 breaks the upside because it's been hesitating here for so fucking long, I would be looking for another retest of this higher trend line right around 4060 and then probably move on to 4110 4120 and test the weekly 200 exponential formally yes there are a lot more things suggesting more downside here to, to come but until i actually get confirmation below that critical support that we're currently resting on i'm not going to be taking positions so that's going to do it for today hope hope this one finds you well hope that you're having a beautiful uh thirsty uh no it's not thursday uh freaky friday what we need a there's got to be a better one than that jesus christ man um want to be wishing you well and i'll be back on later with some more live stream action so take care and see you soon